So off we go again. Uh, here we are. Welcome to the GTV. It's uh, Tuesday, the twenty-fourth uh, of uh, May, and it's uh, six thirty in the evening here. Uh, this evening's little little piece is going to be about uh, money. Uh, subtitled. Uh, History hidden in plain view. Check your pocket, check your bag, check your code, whatever. I'm sure you've got some money there. Um, we're just going to have a look at what it is and what it means in the world today. And we're going to try and do that in, in 15 minutes, uh, 40 minutes now, because I've been wasting the first minute. So, um, in order to understand a word, we have to look a little bit at the, the etymology of the word. So, um, according to the online uh, etymology dictionary. Uh, money comes from late 13th century, meaning coinage or metal currency, meaning uh, also to mint, to create the coin. Uh, from moneta, title of the Roman goddess Juno, in or near whose temple money was coined. Perhaps also from the Latin monere, which means advise or warn. Uh, please, or, or even monitor, please excuse my bad Latin pronunciation. A um, little quote here as well. Uh, old Henry Ford saying, I am not interested in money, but in the things of which money is the symbol. So money is a symbol of things, and, and Henry Ford knew exactly what he was talking about when he said that. If we also check the idea of, of money in terms of uh, uh, where are we here? In uh, terms of a little bit of uh, the Wikipedia information, in terms of the definition, money is any object or record that is generally accepted as payment for goods and services and repayment of debts in a given country or socio-economic context. So what does that mean? Generally accepted as payment for goods. It, it is anything. Any object or record. Uh, this is such a broad definition that it that is quite incredible. The money money can in essence be anything that you want it to be. And uh, um, and so it is uh, in, in most countries. Um, money originated as a commodity money, but nearly all contemporary money systems are based on fiat money. Fiat money. What is fiat money? It <laughs> essentially has no real value. Fiat, he says it here, fiat money is without intrinsic use value as a physical commodity. There is no parallel value that it has. And derives its value by being declared by a government to be legal tender. Or anything used between people can also be legal tender as well, I imagine. Uh, that is, it must be accepted as a form of payment within the boundaries of a country, although um, I did a little bit of research into uh, money in Britain in terms of the fact there was uh, uh, originally Irish money, Scottish money, and English money, um, where um, uh, English money could be used everywhere and was, was, was valid, and uh, um, Scottish money could be used only in Scotland and was valid, Although it's, it has an equivalent English value, which is one to one in the transfer rate, and Irish money was just something that was generally accepted by people and uh, was not legal anywhere at all. Um, of course, that's all now changed with the euro, and I'm sure the Irish are very happy about that. What a ridiculously silly idea that was! Um, oh, they did vote no in the f first. Vote for getting into the European Union, but that's another story. Um, and you can't stop the ship that's traveling in one direction. True. Anyway, um, I also wanted to make a little note here about another uh, uh, another function of money here. The word money is believed to originate from uh, a temple of Hera uh, located on Capital Line. Capital Line, the Capitol Hill, one of Rome's seven hills. Where have we heard of Capitol Hill before? Yes, just look at the American system. Um, 
Uh, also, says Juno may derive from the Etruscan, Etruscan, Etruscan goddess Uni, which means one, unique, unit, union, united, and so on and so on. Anyway, that's a little bit of background. I uh, spent too much time on that. Um, uh, how does money work? Got my pen, got my piece of paper, and we're going to do a little bit of a, a little bit of a drawing here, maybe. Okay, so. So this is how money works, and my phone is going off in my pocket, so I'm going to get rid of that and stick that in here. Okay, uh, so here we are. You can see that, right? Let's call this A, B, and C. Right? A, B, and C are people, businesses, whatever. Not important, really, what they are, but. Um, they all want to get on with life, they all want to start a business, they all want to get involved in things, start making money, so they need some money to start with. So where do you get money from? You really get a job and you get it from your employer, but where do they get their money from? They get it from the big bad bank, which is here at the top. So, uh, let's create Let's create a money, let's create a currency, let's call it, let's, let's create G's, let's say the G's of the currency. Cool. So, what happens is, uh, business A borrows 10 G's from the bank, business B borrows 10 G's, and business C borrows 10 G's. And we all know the banks like to charge interest, and they need interest back, so more money has got to go back to the bank. So they've got to pay 10 G's plus something back to the bank, plus something, plus something. Anyway, they don't worry about that because they think their business is going to be successful and they think uh, that everything's going to be cool and they're not going to have any problems. So, so what happens next? Well, they trade between each other. These businesses trade, these businesses trade, these businesses trade. And after after five, ten years, I don't know, whatever, they get to get to paying the money back. Let's say A makes, A makes uh, 15G, gives 12G back to the bank, has 3G profit. B makes 15G, gives 12G back to the bank, has 13, has 3G profit. Are we following this? Can we see this? Right. And then um, what we have is C. So 15 and 15 make 30, 10, 20, 30. They originally the bank gave out 30. These are, they've made their profit. They got 30, and this business has got zero, zero. So. What happens to this business? Well, you can't pay your money back to the bank, it's a crime, so you go bye-bye and your business is bankrupt and maybe you're in a little prison or a jail or something somewhere uh, and there's no work and there's no, and the company doesn't exist and, and, and there's no jobs for the people and they lose their jobs and all their investments and other things as well. Anyway, consider the fact that these aren't just people, these aren't just com companies, consider the fact if these are countries, what happens? Can you send a country to prison? You can't send a country to prison. So what happens is Ooh, we want our money back. We want our money back, and it's called war. And and, and that's how all all wars start. All wars are, are economic. It's all about money. Forget about religion. Religion is important, but 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 religion doesn't start wars. Money does. It's all a quest for greed and profit and power. Anyway, I just wanted to try and explain it that way. Maybe you got it. Maybe you didn't. There's a lot of great videos from other people on the internet about this anyway. Maybe you want to try uh, Money as Dead 1 and Money as Dead 2. Those are excellent documentaries. Right. No. What else do we What else do we know about money? Uh, well, here's some money. Let's have a look at what we got. We got uh, 10 euros. Could have used something else, but there we go. These are 10 euros. Isn't that the most ridiculously pathetic design of any note that you've ever seen at all. Um, we've got uh, we've got five English pounds. Uh, look at that, there's a queen. Isn't she beautiful? There we go. That's the other side. We got uh, twenty pounds. Uh, there's the queen again. The queen's on it because she owns it. Um, um, and so on. You get the picture. Like, here's here's some Scottish money as well. Don't think the Scottish money exists. Here we go. Here's the Royal Bank of Scotland PLC five pounds. Why am I showing you the money? There's a point to this. There's a point to this. Um, what am I going to start? I'm going to go with the five pounds. Forget about this twenty pound here, right? Um, this is this is the five pounds. Now at the top of the five pounds, it says maybe you can read it. It says under the Bank of England, I promise to pay the bearer on demand the sum of five pounds. 
What is a pound? A pound's a weight. So this is five pounds of something. You've got to note that it doesn't say five pounds of what? It doesn't say, it doesn't, 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 doesn't say it could be five pounds of carrots. This is important. It's very important. Because, let's compare it with this Scottish money here. Uh, read the small print, the fine print, very important. Uh, the, ans the answers are hidden in plain view, as they say. So here we go, here's the Scottish money. Uh, Royal Bank of Scotland, PLC. It's probably a little bit out of focus. Can do that, get it in focus? Oh, maybe that's it. All right. Um, what it says is, I promise to pay the bearer on demand five pounds sterling. Sterling. There's a there's there's an extra word here. What is sterling? Sterling is a weight of silver. Essentially saying that I can take this to the bank and exchange it for five pounds of sterling, not five pounds of carrots or potatoes or or or, or rice krispies or whatever you want to <laughs> exchange it for. <laughs> Although they'd probably be quite happy to exchange rice krispies for for money anyway. Um, point point being that at some point in time this has been removed from the note here and so this uh, also seeming to have uh, equivalent real value in the real world doesn't this whilst seeming to have uh, real value in the real world i would question whether or not the definition of sterling is still the same as it was because as i know these people i'm quite sure but they've been playing around a little bit with those uh, words and their meanings. Remember, we started with etymology today, and, and, and I, I'd, I'd question whether or not sterling still actually means sterling, but the basic idea was it had an equivalent value when it started. The same way that the dollar was backed by backed by, by gold, and you could exchange your dollar for gold. And we're using paper money. Why are we using paper money? We're using paper money because we can't carry those 100 cows with us, those 40 tables that we made, those, uh, we, we just can't carry those. So these are our, our, our notes um, uh, stating officially that, 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 that we have things of value. And note they're signed by somebody as well. Note they're signed by somebody. And it, uh, it's got the person's name there somewhere. This is from the group, the group chief executive of the World Bank of Scotland, PLC. Hey, Scotland has three banks that print money. Three banks that print money. Work that one out. I've been working on that one for a while. I, 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 it, it blows my mind. Um, if anybody's got any answers out there, then let me know. It's three banks that print money, not one central bank. We've got three banks. We've got the Royal Bank printing money. We've got the Bank of Scotland printing money, and we've got the Clydesdale Bank printing money. There's three banks printing money. Anyway, what's the point? The point of this is to make you realize something. That if you live in Europe, you're, you're, you, you don't have these pounds. you got this. you got your euro here. Now, the first point is that um, uh, uh, um, I'm not even going to get into the symbol for the euro, which to me looks like the planet Saturn with a ring around it, but everyone's got their own opinions. That's another story. Um, it's got a signature here, but uh, I've asked and asked and asked and asked and asked and, and, and even Googled this a little bit as well and, and found zero information. Like, who signature is on this note? There's not even a name on here. I mean, this truly is absolutely worthless when it's signed by somebody, but you don't know whose signature it, signature it actually is. I mean, at least the at least the, the Bank of England's got it signed by the by by the chief cashier Andrew Bailey. At least you can read the signature on there. I mean, this is signed by 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 somebody you're not even sure who it is, and it's ten watt. Ten watt. What is what is a euro? What? It's, it's, it's 10 watt. What can you exchange it for? What can you change it for? You can't exchange it or change it for anything. I mean, I advise you to, to just read through the information. Think about it on the, the just read through Wiki, the Wikipedia's money page and just, just think about the, the meanings of that. Take, take special care to read about what happened after Bretton Woods and how money has lost all its original value. And this truly is just a piece of paper. It truly is just a piece of paper, nothing more, absolutely valueless, and you've been hoodwinked. You've been taken for a ride. That's it. Thank you very much. Think about it.